I'm Lynn Langett, and here we are at part six out of six of my series using Google's Cloud for Developers. And in this part, we're going to take a look at learning more about the Google Cloud. If you've been following along so far, you've learned a little bit about me. Most important for this series is that from Google, I've been recognized over the past two years as a Google Cloud developer expert for my community education work. To be clear, I am not an employee of Google. I'm an independent um, big data consultant. But I've done work on the Google Cloud as well as other major clouds such as Amazon, Azure, and Rackspace. So this is the, the end of the road of this first series. I may do more depending on interest and demand. I made this series because as a big data and cloud architect, I really feel like the Google Cloud needs a little bit more love and attention because there's quite a lot of um, solid technical offering out there. And uh, I have shown the Google Cloud to some of my customers and they've been interested, so hopefully my series got you started. So as with your start, you probably want to learn even more, so let's continue. So over my past couple of years of doing proof of concepts and real world deployments on the Google Cloud, I have a couple of lessons from the real world and these apply not only to the Google Cloud, but cloud deployments in general, but there are some things specific to the Google Cloud. For many customers that have existing infrastructure, the cloud is a completely new paradigm and starting small is just prudent. So as I started the series, I'll end it. Thinking about compute, data, and other APIs is a solid way to start. Another consideration is to look at what type of application you would like to host on the cloud and consider some greenfield applications, particularly when you're doing PaaS, or in this case, Google App Engine. My experience with Greenfield or writing new or writing for the native pass offering versus porting over has been, it's a much easier path if you write something specifically for the particular destination rather than trying to port it over. I have done both. Um, taking a look at the programming language that you're gonna use, uh, this series of course focused on Java, um, the environment, the tools, and the services um, is an important consideration and one of the considerations around the Google Cloud is the choice of language. Um, Java and Python are most fully implemented. Um, there's some new support for PHP and of course support for Go at this time. Another set of considerations that I didn't cover in this series but are always important in the real world are testing approaches. In my experience, testing around uh, platform as a service offerings is quite challenging because it's somewhat different than testing traditional um, applications. And um, I have some information about this on my blog about unit testing and integration testing for Google App Engine in, in particular. Another consideration I find that is new to a lot of customers is disaster recovery approaches, um, whether or not they want to implement multi-zone, how they're going to manage their scripting, um, how they're going to test uh, for uh, disaster recovery and so on and so forth. Again, outside the scope of what I presented here, but very, very important in the real world. What I mean by this is what approach you'll take to instrumentation. And I, I touched on this really lightly in this series, but again, it's an important real world consideration. One capability that I'll be exploring more and I'll probably make separate screencasts about is app stats. It's something that I discovered in, in uh, making this, which is a uh, more extended logging process that you can enable in Google App Engine, which is really interesting to me. There are a couple white papers that I referenced that I read, um, again, around scaling, um, specifically scaling on the LAMP stack on GCE, the, the second one there, and then there's a reference architecture. And I'll really be looking forward to more information from Google on best practices around scaling, um, super important in the real world. So again, kind of pulling it down to moving from you know, evaluating and prototyping to a first real world project. In my experience, one of the first considerations is understanding which services or combination of services you're gonna go out on. And because now Google Compute Engine is general availability, um, it gives uh, more breadth to the offering, which is again, one of the reasons I wanted to present this series. When I presented last year, I don't think Google Compute Engine was even available, even for a trusted tester. So the fact that it's general availability gives you the the uh, infrastructure as a ser service option, um, which you can run in any combination with the platform as a service or App Engine. Now again, I just introduced App Engine as a web hosting environment. There's a whole bunch more capabilities that you should definitely evaluate and look at around caching, routing, 
running GAE as a service, and now endpoints, just to name a couple. Um, and there's lots of documentation that I'll point you to on the um, Google developer site. Really important that you take advantage of the services and infrastructure that they've provided if you're going to go out on GAE. Another important consideration going on in the Google Cloud is if you want to use any of their other rich APIs. Prediction and translation are the ones most frequently used, but of course they have a set of everything from Google Drive to YouTube to you know G+, everything else. So it's important to consider what's going to provide value to your business when you're going out with your particular application. And then I wouldn't be me if I didn't have a special talk about data. So um, I, again, discovered this very well-written article while uh, preparing this series, and the link is referenced in the slides. Um, this is the, the main um, graphic from the article. I think this is just beautifully done, and this shows on the Google Cloud what types of options you have around data storage. Now, one of the biggest paradigm shifts that I'm seeing as customers go out on the cloud is they typically think uh, either relationally, so they want to use a, in this case, MySQL or Google Cloud SQL solution for their entire solution, or they tend to think um, the opposite of relational, no SQL. They want to go out um, completely without any relational solution at all. And frankly, the, the answer tends to be in the middle. So what, the, what my real world of cloud data implementation has been over the past two years is that the majority of the customers are going out with some of their data on a relational store and some of their data on some of these alternative stores. So whether it's uh, Google Cloud Storage or you know what, just storing data out on Compute Engine or some other place, they might stay, uh, store the data here on the uh, App Engine data store. Again, understanding architecturally and making the correct decision is actually quite important. So spend some time around this set of considerations and um, do a couple of proof of concepts as you're going out with your new application. So now we're going to take a look at uh, the developer resources. One of the areas that I found in starting to work with the Google Cloud um, coming from an Amazon and Microsoft background is, you know, every vendor is different on how they present their resources. So I'm trying to give you a jump start and give you the benefit of my experience. So this is kind of the way I look at the resources and I'm going to actually tour you through them. I know that sounds goofy, but hopefully it will help um, you to go more quickly to get the answers that you need. So when I think about the Google Cloud resources, I think about each product. So in other words, resources for Google App Engine, for example, or resources for Google Compute Engine. And um, I will always go to the API documentation and look there first. Oftentimes there will be quick starts and code samples. Um, I'm, I'm not a big believer in coding from scratch if I've got a sample out there to start with. In addition to that, um, there are more online resources around the Google Developer Relations Team blog. Um, they'll have new announcements there. They do have a YouTube channel, including Google Developers Live, which I subscribe to and get a lot of good information off of. Um, I also will take a look at the GitHub code samples. Uh, there is a code lab section that I showed earlier, and um, the uh, teams tend to also be very good about answering questions that are posted in Stack Overflow. So I'll be uh, just touring you through this in just a sec. Live resources are the annual conference, Google I.O., well worth your time, difficult to get into. It usually sells out in less than 30 minutes. Um, if you can't go, don't despair. All the nearly all the sessions are made available on YouTube. So that's a really great way to keep up with the announcements around the cloud and, and to um, sharpen your dev skills. Also, there are uh, Google user groups, developer user groups that are in the different areas. I know I've actually been to um, user groups for Google on the West Coast of the United States, and I also had the fun of speaking in Bangalore um, at a Google user group. So there, there's quite a lot of them, and you know it's a great place to meet up with other Google developers. Google also offers G Plus Google Developer Advocate Hangouts, which is a really great way for you to interact with the product team. So again, if you subscribe to the Google Developer channel on YouTube, you can see when those are going to be available and join those or watch the recordings. And then new, they added a cloud developer training, um, which I put a link to. Uh, this is a new offering, um, which I actually haven't gone through it yet. I, I, I understood from the team last year they were going to be creating it, um, so I probably will run through it and take a look at it. In addition, there is a new group of recognized partner experts, of which I am one, called a Google Developer Expert. It's somewhat analogous to the concept of a MVP for a Microsoft product, for example. 
and uh, the GDEs, uh, many of them have blogs. Um, some of them make YouTube videos like I do here and contribute code samples. So that's another um, set of resources that you can look at. So I'm going to just kind of tour you through my main sites. Again, hopefully this is a quick start for you when you are looking for more information about the Google Cloud. So two main URLs to start with is cloud.google.com or developers.google.com WAC Cloud. So they're similar but not the same. So this is more of a business focus, although there is a developers section inside of here. And I do see sometimes that um, this uh, site seems to be updated a little bit more quickly than this site over here. So if there's a new product release, for example, we recently had um, endpoints uh, released. You can see here's the products. And for each product, of course, you have features, pricing, case studies, and documentation. So this to me seems of a more of a business site. And here's cloud endpoints. Also, you have a nice um, selection of tools. As I showed in the series, here's the Google plugin for Eclipse, Cloud Playground, push to deploy in the Android Studio. So this to me seems business and developer focused. And you can also click right here to go to your console, which is a nice, useful link. So I'm liking this site. It looks like a lot of information is being moved over here. This is kind of a new site. Now, in addition to this, I'm going to spend a lot of time on um, developers.google.com WAC Cloud because I'm going to be looking for the various products. So for example, if I want to drill into App Engine, the general direction here is it talks about kind of what it is, why I should use it, the features, the pricing, downloads, and getting started. Now this is kind of fun. I didn't show this in the series, but um, if you want to try it out in Python, you actually can see the code and, and see that it dynamically spins up in here and you can um, you can actually play with the play with the code inside of here and see the various files. Um, don't have this for Java, unfortunately, but um, this is kind of fun to play with. And if you're you know wanting to try out Python, um, and then we have the languages we can work with: sample code, developer support, the admin console, so on and so forth. So if once we drill into the languages, we have a Java tutorial. We have information about Java, and I always go to the tools section, and that's where you know you have the various tools that are integrated. So I'll just show you uh, another one, BigQuery, just to give you kind of the, the idea here. And you can see what it is, what's the pricing, the quick starts, the tools here, the API, even more tools down here. Now the next place that I often go is over to YouTube to Google developers. You notice I am subscribed, like, like nearly a half a million other people, and uh, I just find that it's really useful for me to watch um, the videos as they come out here. And one thing Google's very good about is they're very good about um, putting their conference videos online. So if you can't make it out to a conference, um, you know, this is uh, DevOx, Google Developers Live, here's IO from last year. Um, and they're just very, very good about that. Now I mentioned the Google Developer Experts. So the Google Developer Experts is a two-year-old program, new program. And here's the member directory, so you can see uh, where am I here? Here I am. And you can see some more information about me, and you can see you could follow me if you want to on G+. So I showed you the main site, which I'm going to just say again, developers.google.com WAC Cloud, and then go into the various products. I mentioned in the last screencast, but I'll mention again that the uh, developer relations team has been putting quite a lot of code samples up onto GitHub. Now, a lot of these are in Python, but there are some in Java, and I've noticed that actually they're putting quite a lot up here. So I always take a look when I'm wanting to build up a proof of concept or a first um, implementation of some application on the Google Cloud to see if it's some pattern that they already have up here. I did show you the developer experts. Another thing about developer experts is if you have a user group or a meetup group, um, Google's uh, taking an approach to help the developer experts to get their voices heard and they have been um, open to um, helping us to get out and speak at the user group. Now a couple more things to look at. Here is the GitHub repository and you can see if I scroll down I've got stuff for App Engine, Compute Engine, Google Cloud Data Store. Here's an interesting one I actually played with this. Um, the Google Compute Engine cluster for Hadoop. Let me go to myself and Stack Overflow, and you can see that I've set up um, some of the Google Cloud services as favorite tags. And if I want to see the 
the questions about Google Compute Engine and take a look at them, see if there's anything interesting, see if I can answer any of them. Um, it's just another um, resource that I find pretty darn helpful. Another thing that I did just for you guys for this series is on a new Tumblr blog that I made, I made a page for you. Um, and actually it's kind of for me too, but it's all the links from this whole series. So it's uh, referenced on my, on my uh, GitHub. All the code samples uh, that I showed in the previous screencast and the script samples are here. And then in the README, I have the playlist uh, uh, for all six of the series. Um, and then I have my blog and then I have that Tumblr page. So if you've been hanging in with me this whole series, I really appreciate it and hope you found value in it and I hope you will try out the Google Cloud. In addition to that, I hope you will uh, take my suggestion to um, not only learn something new for yourself, but also teach uh, some children something new. I think it's just extremely important that those of us who are technical professionals help our teachers and our, our next generation learn how to be technical professionals. So to that end, I am the co-founder of a nonprofit called Teaching Kids Programming. And we have free courseware that's designed to introduce kids ages 10 and up to programming languages. And the courseware is Java, Small Basic, or C Sharp. And you are welcome to use it. And I'd love to hear if you do. So to kind of wind this down, I will remind you that about a year ago now, I made a more extensive set of courses out on Pluralsight about the Google Cloud. I have intro to the Google Cloud. I have a course on GCE and I have a course on BigQuery. It's about five hours worth of courseware. So if you have a Pluralsight subscription, because it is a subscription-based service, feel free to take a look at that courseware. Even though it's a year old, there's still, I think, some value in it. And also, I am a working independent contractor, so if you think that there's an opportunity for me to add value to your particular company, reach out to me through these channels. So I'm Lynn Langett for All Things Data. Have a wonderful day.